Hello brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, today we're going to be talking about how did Jesus deal with the belief that he was not God the Father. How did he deal with people? Okay, I wanted to do two videos. If you haven't seen, this should be the first video you watch, but if you don't, that's fine. They don't have to watch them in any order, but how did Paul deal with it? And now we're going to read how Jesus dealt with it. So, if you do this one first, we're going to see how Jesus dealt with it. Then you can watch how Paul dealt with it. Remember what Paul said, be ye followers of me as I am of Christ. Okay. Why does Paul deal with people the way he does? Because that's how Jesus dealt with people. So how did Jesus deal with the belief that, with people that had the belief that he was not God the Father? He's trying to preach truth to them, but they don't want it. Okay, turn to John 5, 14. Afterward Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. Jesus had healed somebody, and they didn't know who it was, then Jesus found him, and, they, and then the man realized it was Jesus that made me whole. It was a blind man. Right. Verse 16. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath day. But Jesus answered them, My father worketh hitherto, and I work. Remember, Jesus does something, it's God the Father doing it through them. They're both doing it. Okay? We're killer too, and I work. Verse 18, Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his Father, making himself equal to God. They're one. I and my Father are one, it says later. Okay? The reaction is what? Now they want to even kill him more. Verse 19. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, The Son can do nothing of himself. Capital S, Son, can do nothing of himself. The capital S, Son of God. But what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. So he's trying to preach truth. That, hey, I'm just doing the work of God the Father is working through me. The soul is in me. I'm God manifest in the flesh. And they sought to kill him. Now, he kind of started talking to them some more and kind of got them away from wanting to stone him. But if you keep reading, he goes his own way. But here's a good one. Turn to John 8.39. Of a good reaction but he goes his own way but he tries to talk to him and say hey why are you trying to stone me why are you trying to kill me why do you have such hate i'm trying to preach truth to you so on 839 they answered and said unto him abraham is our father remember the first part that we just read about jesus saying that his father worketh and he worketh abraham is our father jesus saith unto them if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. Which they weren't. Verse 40. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that had told you the truth, which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. One God, the Father. Verse 42, Jesus saith unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. Why? Because that's God the Father manifest in the flesh. Remember when they worship, when they saw God, they worshipped him not as God, but came vain, became vain in their imagination, and their foolish heart was darkened. Why would they love him? Because that's God right there in front of them. Not God the Son, God the Father manifest in the flesh, right there in front of them. For I proceeded forth and came from God, capital G God, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech, even because ye cannot hear my word? What does the Bible say? He is of God, heareth God's word. Ye, ye hear, ye are, ye are not of God, therefore ye hear them not. I'm paraphrasing, I'm probably messing up that last part, but um, I don't think I have it in my notes on this one. 
He that is God heareth God's word. Okay, ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. <laughs> I just had it backwards. Okay? Why can't you hear not my word? Because they're not of God. God is not their father. Verse 44. Ye are of your father, the devil. That's what he said about, you know, Abraham, you know. Ye of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Satan and this Antichrist spirit is the biggest thing pushing this false trinity agenda, this false Jesus. Why? Because he abode not in the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. You have to go through the body to get to the soul. You have to go through Jesus Christ to get to God the Father. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Well, you know, capital T, Trinity, and Godhead, they're the same thing. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Well, you know, God the Son and the Son of God, it's just basically the same thing. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. He's trying to integrate paganism with the absolute truth. God the Son is not the same thing as the capital S Son of God. Uh, you know, it's God the Spirit. Well, God the Spirit, the Spirit of God, you know, the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, it's basically the same thing. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. Why? For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. He's preaching the truth. This is God man the manifest in the flesh right in front of them. And they don't believe it. Verse 46. Which of you convinceth me of sin? And he always kept trying to say he was a sinner. Because if you make God out to be a sinner, then you can be your own Lord. You can do your, be your own, you know, God. He's not God. You make him out to be a sinner, he's not God, but then you can go back to being your own God and Lord of your own life. Okay. And if I say the truth, why do you not believe me? He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because you are not of God. We are going to go over that verse anyway. Um, but it's always good to memorize verse. That's one good verse to memorize. Okay. He's saying you're not of God. That's why you can't understand what I'm saying. I am God speaking to you. And you don't understand. I mean, think about it. He's just saying, right there he just said, in verse 43, even because you cannot hear my word, is Jesus speaking. Then he gets down and says, he that is of God heareth God's word. They're one and the same. You're not of God. Um, he that's of God heareth God's words, ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Verse 48. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, Say we not well that thou art a Samaritan and hast a devil? So now he's not even a Jew, he's a Samaritan. I mean, some people can look and say some Samaritans were Jews, but the Jews didn't have any dealings with the Samaritans. Remember the woman at the well? Okay? The Jews, saying that separately, didn't have any dealings with the Samaritans. But they're calling him a Samaritan and a devil. They're still putting him down. And if you watch the study on we, when we talk about um, Paul um, and what he went through when he tried to preach the truth, they mocked him. Are they not mocking Jesus right now, saying he's a Samaritan and has the devil? Yeah. Verse 49, Jesus answered, I have not a devil, but I honor my father, and ye do dishonor me. Anytime you have someone who vehemently stands for the Trinity, they're not honoring the God of the King James Bible. They're doing him dishonor. Verse 50. And I seek not mine own glory. There is one that seeketh and judgeth. Remember, all judgment has been given over to Jesus, the body. God judges through Jesus Christ, God the Father. Yeah. Verse 51, Verily, verily, I say unto you, If a man keep my sayings, he shall never see death. He's talking about having eternal life. Verse 52, But they don't get it, because they're not of God. Then said the Jews unto him, Now we know that thou hast a devil. Abraham is dead. 
and the prophets, and thou sayest, If a man keep my sayings, he shall never taste of death. Verse 53, Art thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead? And the prophets are dead, whom, make, whom makest thou thyself? Verse 54, Jesus answered, If I honor myself, my honor is nothing. It is my Father that honoreth me, of whom ye say that he is your God. Yet ye have not known him, but I know him. And if I sh should say I know him not, I shall be a liar. Like unto you, but I know him, and keep his sayings. Remember he says, He that seen me hath seen the Father, the body. When he speaks, it's God the Father speaking through him. Jesus is the body, God the Father is the soul, and the Spirit of God the Father. I always say the Father because the Spirit of capital G God, there's only one capital G God, 1 Corinthians 8, 6. It's the Father. There's only one God the Father. So when you see Spirit of God, it's saying it's the Spirit of God the Father. When you see Son of God, it's saying it's the Son of God the Father. Okay, Jesus is the body. Keep his sayings. Verse 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. That really got him worked up. Verse 57. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. <coughs> I am is a title for God. Is come is something you can only say about God the Father. When you say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, you're saying that Jesus is the body of God the Father. They're one and the same. And you've got people that deny that. No, they're not. They, there's no connection between God the Father and the Son because they're not. God the Father is not the Son. The Son is not the Spirit. God the Spirit. God the Son is not God the Spirit. God the Spirit is not God the Father. And I agree with them. Totally. Because there is no God the Son in Scripture. Their three false gods might be separate. Uh, Brother Brian at King James Video Ministries does a good teaching about who those three false gods are. And he talks about the, uh, the beast, um, the dragon, and the false prophet. They are completely separate. <laughs> okay? But um, remember, those are titles for God. Before Abraham was, I am. Before Abraham was, I am trying to remember my spot. Verse 59. What's the reaction? Then took they up stones to cast at him. What's Jesus' reaction? But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. You don't want the truth? You want to be blind? Stay blind. And he walks away. He leaves. They don't want the truth? Move on. Jesus did that. Paul did that. Matthew 13, 10. And his disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Okay, you got these people that are not understanding who Jesus Christ is. Mm -hmm. So his disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. They are not of God. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. See, it helps to say the verse over and over, and you finally get it right. Verse 12, For whosoever hath, to him shall it be given, and he shall have more abundance. But to whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. They're seeking the Lord like we talked about with Paul. What was Paul's reaction to people who reject Jesus as being God the Father? If you're seeking the Lord, God will open, show you the truth. If you're seeking truth. Verse 13, Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, see not. God the Father is right in front of them. And the body of Jesus Christ. And hearing, they hear not. We just talked about that. The heathers of God hear God's words. Oh, God is our Father. No, He's not. I'm right here in front of you. And you don't see me. 
Neither do they understand. And in them is the in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. Why? For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. With the heart. People got a lot of head knowledge, but it hardly ever makes it down to their heart in these last days. That was the biggest thing we always push when it comes to the plan of salvation. It's up here, but it's not down here. Oh, I want to change, uh, what is it? I believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but down here I hate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I don't believe in it. Why? Because the life they live, there's no resurrection. They're not living the resurrected life, the new creature in Christ Jesus. Okay, the old man was never crucified. They don't like the resurrection. Down here they hate the resurrection, but up here they'll confess it. Well, I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection. No, they do not. No, they do not. It has to be down here. And if it's down here, you're going to live a life of Christ. Jesus comes in. He is Lord of your life. He is God Almighty, fully and completely. Not a third of God. Not the second member of the Trinity. Not God the Son. He's God the Father, fully and completely. Only one God. Verse 16, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Mm -hmm. What's going on here? He's explaining to them, this is why they won't listen. You say, well, what does it mean by, but blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Turn to Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Now that question there, there's two parts to that question. Who do men say that I am, the Son of Man, am? Know how it's backwards. Son of Man. Not backwards, but Son of Man. Whom do men say I am? Say that I, the Son of Man, am. Hmm. It's not what does God say. It doesn't say, what, do, what does God say that I, the Son of God, am? Because <laughs> that would kind of answer it. But you know what I'm saying? It's all about what do men say? They see me as the Son of Man because He came in the likeness of sinful flesh. So He can be the, the perfect sacrifice for sins. Look at their reaction. And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Wow. Some Elias. And others, Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. They're saying the prophets like reincarnated. John the Baptist was, remember, he was beheaded. He's just one of those prophets reincarnated. Verse 15, he saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And what does Jesus say? Verse 17, Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. They that are of God heareth God's words. That's what Jesus is saying. He, the question, what do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? Well, God the Father revealed that to Simon, okay, Peter, Simon Peter, that He's not the Son of Man, He's the Son of the Living God. It's God manifest in the flesh right there. That's why they were calling Him Lord, capital L, Lord. John 8, 47, we'll say it again. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Those people, God was not their Father. When we start preaching the truth about the Godhead, the God, um, you have God the Father, you have the Son, capital S, Son of God the Father, which is Jesus Christ. And you have the capital S Spirit of God the Father, which is the Holy Spirit, or often sometimes referred to as the Holy Ghost. These three are one, one person in the Godhead, body, soul, and spirit. Jesus is the, is the person of the Godhead. God, then God is their Father. 
Now are we the sons of God? Sons of God in the Old Testament is always a reference to angels, but for us in the New Testament, now are we the sons of God? If God is, the, is our Father, we'll hear His words. That's how you can tell when you come across a lot of fakes and frauds, that they vehemently, they might not know the truth, they might be ignorant, like I was, use, they might believe the real Godhead of the King James Bible, but be using Trinity terms falsely, and they just need to be told, you need to get them out of your, their vocabulary, and they'll be like, oh, you're absolutely right. I need to get them out of my vocabulary. But you're talking about hardcore, vehemently, I'm going to die for the Trinity, my pagan gods, plural. They're not of God. God the Father is not their father. They're not brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, one thing I wanted to point out here, too, that God showed me was, just like the twelve apostles compared to all the Jews of that day, you have the twelve apostles, and remember, one of them betrayed him. So you can argue twelve or eleven at one time, one of them betrayed him. So eleven people, out of all the Jews, God opened their hearts because they wanted the truth and showed them that that's God the Father standing right in front of them. God manifests in the flesh, speaking to them out of all the Jewish people. Doesn't that kind of feel like today when it comes to Bible-believing Christians today? There's just a few of us that believe in the Jesus Christ of Scripture, who is God the Father, and the rest of the world is clueless because God is not their Father. They have no clue who the real Jesus Christ is because they don't want the real Jesus Christ. They want the world. Matthew 15, 14. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. If the blind leave the blind, they both shall be fall, shall fall into a ditch. The whole point of this, brother and sister Christ, once again, there are brethren in the, that are getting into fights, they're getting into arguments, and they're getting into debates. And we are not car salesmen. What was Jesus' reaction when they didn't believe? He hid himself. They don't want to see me for who I am? He hid himself and left. And he went to people who did, who did want the truth. They came to him, could you tell us about this parable? We don't understand this, Lord, capital L, Lord. Show us, please. We want the truth. The 12 apostles. Don't fall into the trap of getting into the huge debates with people. Don't waste your time with it. Okay? I'm telling you, you're better off just going off by yourself doing and praying with the Lord and talking with the Lord and doing a Bible study or something than getting into an hour-long debate, a two-hour-long debate, fighting and arguing with these lost people that want nothing to do with the Jesus of the King James Bible. The real Jesus Christ of Scripture, who is the capital S Son of God. He is God manifest in the flesh. The body of God. He is God, fully and completely. Matthew 15, 14. We did that one. Acts 5, 38. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel be the work of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, lest haply ye be found even to fight against God. The belief that Jesus is God the Father, everlasting Father in Isaiah 9, 6, has been there from the very beginning of the church age and will continue out into eternity. The Catholic Church has uh, pretty much tried to destroy a lot of groups that vehemently stood for the Godhead and the real Jesus Christ of the King James Bible. Um, the Waldensians, okay? They've tried very hard, but this has been here forever. God's word, uh, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. It's mentioned three times in the four gospels, okay? The belief that Jesus Christ is God the Father, He's God fully and completely, has always been there. Okay, Just wanted to point that out to people. Uh, the Trinity, it keeps changing. They have to keep changing the definitions. They, gotta, they purposely make it difficult. I remember a brother in Christ, I think it was either, I don't know if it was JT, I think it was Brother Brian that did a video where he showed how a uh, priest, Catholic priest, was admitting that, yeah, it's, it's meant to be complicated. The Trinity is meant to be complicated so you can't understand it, so we can keep changing it as we see fit. Okay. It comes to naught. Well, this isn't that popular, so we gotta, we got to tweak it to the world so it can be popular again with the world. It keeps changing to please the world, so they can keep the world in bondage. Satan, through the Catholic Church and through all these false religions that are just daughters, you know, they're just closet Catholics, 
But this belief is not new. This isn't us coming out with a brand new belief. Okay, Jesus taught it. Paul taught it. Okay, after you get done watching this, go watch the one about Paul. How was his reaction to people? Mm -hmm. So, to those who vehemently defend the pagan belief of men that Jesus is not God the Father, Luke 16, 15. Let this sink in. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourself before men. I don't care. I believe in this right here. I'm not trying to be part of any group, which most Babel buildings, if you want to be a part of their group, you have to denounce that God, Jesus is God the Father in order to be part of that club. Okay, because that's all they are in these Babel buildings. They're just clubs, uh, government buildings. Uh, they're businesses trying to make lots of money. Okay, but it's a club. You have to denounce it. But it says here that ye are they which justify yourself before men. And that's exactly the number one people that you're going to run into that vehemently defend this. Because the club that they're part of, the group that they're a part of, they'd kick them out if they profess the truth. That Jesus is, in fact, God the Father. They'd kick them out. What's going on? But God knoweth your hearts. There it is again. It comes down to the heart. No, it's just head belief. Head belief. No, it comes down to the heart. God knows the heart. For that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Think about it. Over half the world professes to believe in a Jesus Christ. And every last one of them tries to say that Jesus is not God the Father. He's not God fully completely. He's just a prophet. Oh, he's just a created being. Him and Satan are brothers. Or he's just the Archangel uh, Michael, I think it is, manifest in the flesh. So, but they all have their trinity. They all have the trinity. They're trinities. But they don't believe that Jesus is God fully and completely. Why is this trinity so popular, highly esteemed among men? Because it's an abomination in the sight of God. That's the way the world's going. What was Jesus' response to people who didn't want the truth? He hid himself and went his way. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let them alone. Okay. Once again, this is hopefully this is encourages you. Don't get into a two-hour. Like I said, I'd rather spend ten minutes talking to a brother in Christ who's confessing his fault and asking for prayer than spend two hours debating absolute truth with someone who's lost. Okay? You preach the plan of salvation. When I realize people are lost, I link the gospel message when I'm online. People get, always get upset. That's all your, your only answer is unlocked. Yeah. He, he, they that are of God heareth God's words. Ye, hear, ye therefore hear them not because ye are not of God. It's that simple. You don't argue with them. You're not a car salesman. Okay? Don't get into huge debates with the brethren. Or not the brethren, sorry. Even with brethren, don't get into debates, but with people that are lost, or even with brethren that haven't come to the knowledge of truth, like I've said before, and I'll say it again, there was people that really hammered me saying they wanted their pagan trinity, and I believe they were saved. And they they believe in the Godhead, but they wanted to keep the Trinity terms. There's nothing wrong with the Trinity terms, but they believed in the Godhead. That's the key word there. Not that they believe the pagan Trinity that where it really comes from. They believe the Godhead, body, soul, and spirit, but they love Trinity, and they're not going to let go. They let them alone. A few months later, I had one of them come back to me and say, You know what? You were right, brother. I should not have been that you know, a jerk. <laughs> he didn't use the word jerk, but, you know, I shouldn't have been that, you know, mean. I should have just submitted myself to the Word of God, and God's helping me, and I'm doing my best to get that stuff, those words, those false terms and words out of my vocabulary. You still let them alone, even if they're a saved brethren. God will still bring them to the truth. You try to preach truth to a brethren that you know is saved, you believe in all your heart he's saved, they don't want the truth, you have the same attitude. Let them alone. God will bring them into all truth if they have the Holy Spirit in them. And I've seen it happen time and time again. I'm a, I'm a, a best example of it, of coming to the knowledge of the truth. God had to tear me down because I was told so many false things as a false Christian growing up in the world. And these Babel buildings. 
and he had to start building me back up. And I had some people tell me stuff that just sounded crazy, and I was like, nah, sorry. But later on, God brought me to the truth. When I got to doing my own studies, I came around to that same topic, and I was like, you know what, Lord? They were right. That brother in Christ or that sister in Christ, they were right. God will bring them around to the truth. Okay? Just don't get into debates and arguments. Don't let it become bitterness. Don't let it become backbiting, name-calling, mocking. That's what the lost world does. Only a God Almighty, our Savior, our Lord and Savior, only He has the right to mock. Okay? Not us. Give them to the Lord. Okay? So grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.